You're welcome back. Our first guest, like I said earlier on, is Tosin Olasende, mm. and she is the founder of Money Africa. Tosin is a chartered accountant with 10 years under her sleeves. She has a firm grasp of accounting, corporate finance, auditing, and taxation. Wow. And I tell you, that's quite wow. a bit. Wow. Well, Tosin will be uh, talking to us today, like I said, and she's worked with several multinationals from where we're going to tap her. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. from her experience and we are indeed highly privileged to have her with us on the program today. So Tosin, Tosin, you're welcome. Good morning Tosin. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, yeah. Good morning. I'm excited to be here with you. And I'm excited to have you because I'll be firing the first question. And are I'm you... double excited to have a woman <laughs> come talk to us about family finance and Are you ready money? for this? <laughs> Very now, ready, very yes, excited. As you, yes. Yeah, as you already know, probably, this month is all about success. You know? And of course, you will agree with me that money management within the family sphere goes a long, long, long way in ensuring financial stability within the family. Now tell me, who do you think should be in charge of money management in the family? Hmm. Both people should actually be in, involved. It's like a boat. You're going on a journey, right? If one person, person is paddling, right, and the other person is not paddling, you set the, ship, you set the boat back. So both of them should actually be involved. Also, we have situations where as it is one person's strength than the other. So it could be the husband, it could be the wife. Whoever has the strongest strength can lead that ship, but both of them have to be involved. Mm. Good. Okay, both of them have to be involved. One will be more active while the other i believe should be a little passive because you can't have two two um what's captains, the, captains in, in in one boat so there must be someone who you know sets the pace and say okay let's go this direction and the other one is saying okay let's go yes i think for us it's more about um a joint decision Right, but I also understand where you're coming from about leading the ship. But if the other person does not impute into it, um, the leadership will be stranded. So it has to be joint, all be with the leadership. Yeah. All right, so that <coughs> takes that takes me to my next question. Now, at what point should a family start to consider management of their finances? At what point? <clears throat> the conversation should actually start before the marriage itself. The conversation should start. You know how when people are getting married and you go to church for counseling mm -hmm. or for those that believe in other religion and they have counseling, <clears throat> there should be financial counseling before they get married. The conversation should start earlier, even before the marriage itself. Now, let me bring you back to the numbers. <clears throat> Divorce, not infidelity. Infidelity, sorry. Okay, wait. Finances, not infidelity, is number one cause of divorce. So it's a very, very important conversation for couples to actually have. Very, very important. So the earlier, the better. But if they've never had it, now is a good time. Okay. All right. So anytime is a good time. If they didn't have it yes. while they were courting, as soon as the marriage is sealed, they must talk about financial, financial matters. They have to. Sure. Very important. Yes. But you see... Uh, I'll still dwell on that question a bit because I need a little clarification. At that stage in your lives, you know, you haven't really feel, you haven't... No commitment. You, haven't, so you haven't even seen the reality of life, right? You haven't seen the actuals of life. How, how then would you be realistic in your assumptions? Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> there are two things you don't completely outsource, and that is your health, and, that, and the next thing is your finances. If people understand or if people realize how critical the role of finances actually play in marriages, they will take it a little bit more seriously. The truth is love is not just going to put food on the table. Love is not going to pay school fees. Love is not going to um, buy the shoes for the kids. It's a very important conversation. From knowing that the cost of an additional child can literally set us set us back from other resources, just being able to drill everything down to the numbers. Now, the earlier we start getting comfortable with these conversations, the earlier we start anticipating them, the better. 
So we always, always say that once people realize how critical this role plays, mm. then we'll stop pushing it to the back burner. We'll stop treating it as something that comes like that. And people change. So at the beginning of the marriage, maybe they are a bit more, you know, they have a different spending habit. They have a different spending ha pattern. They've never even seen that kind of money. Sometimes people get married young. They are making maybe like 80,000 naira a month. Five years into the marriage, they might have upgraded to like 300,000 naira. Then maybe their real colors will start showing. What do we then do? So it's a constant conversation. It's like taking a shower. You yeah. keep doing it repeatedly. You keep doing it continuously and you keep adjusting and tweaking it. But it is a very important conversation that has to be constantly have. Now, where do we always start from? The biggest part we always start from is actually having a budget. Being able to draw it out clearly. This is how much is coming in. This is how much we want to go out. How much are both parties contributing to it? So now, let's say there are any two different amounts of money. It's not, we cannot say that they have to contribute 50 50%. Somebody can say, Oh, I want to pay school fees. Another person will say, Oh, I want to take care of the food. It depends from people to people. But that we should not have a conversation or that we should not have a chat that sort of drills it down and shows these things. It's going to be very, very hard to track. Mm, wow. So, I, I mean, basically, you're, you're telling me, that. you're telling me, John, that I need to be disciplined. I need to put these things on the table. I need to talk about these things. Well, I'll go to my next question. Because what I see happening now is that uh, the couple needs help. Mm. Financial institutions, we know them to offer a wide, wide range of financial packages. Where should families direct their attention when choosing these packages? Where, where exactly should the families look at when you know, we, we, we come across these uh, financial packages? I love that. I think and I strongly believe that the packages that families should actually look at, because now that you're speaking about it, even when we're talking about financial literacy in general, right, it's not still like very deep mainstream. A lot of people still do not do it. Now we are now even looking at a smaller niche that is targets at families, financial literacy for families. What can they look at? Number one place that can start with is the biggest, biggest part is the budgeting. The next part that they're also looking at, especially for those that have children, they're looking at how do we then invest for the future of our children, right? The next thing you're also looking at is things like what mortgage, home ownership. Do we plan to own a home in the future or not? So it's like a whole lot of different packages. So like one financial institution could have like different packages that could actually meet this their needs. But now that you're talking about it, I totally understand how can we have a one box fit all that all those different components could be put into together to actually target families? But you have a very solid point, and I totally understand that. Okay, are there principles in you know managing money for the family or managing money generally? Are there principles? And if there are, what are they? Okay, I like to tell people that we need to start seeing ourselves as a company. A company has three key lines. They have a top line. That top line is their revenue. So if you look at Nigerian breweries, GTB, Coca-Cola, they're all thinking, how can we sell more Coke? How can we give out more loan? How can we do this? That top line. So as a family, Mr. and Mrs. Lagbaja, how, what are we bringing in on a monthly basis? Very important. That is their own top line. Now you have the middle line. For a company, again, what is the cost of our salary? What is the cost of building? All these things. Now we bring it again to our family. Mr. and Mrs. Lagbaja, what is our cost of rent? Are we being honest? Can we really afford to be staying in Lekki? Do we can we afford to live here? Honest conversations. Can we afford to send our children to Corona? Can we afford honest conversations? So you're looking at your expenses. What can we truly afford? Can we truly afford to travel every year? Do we really have that money? Now your expenses are very critical. Now you have the last line. The bottom line is profit. Again, Coca-Cola is looking at their profit after they've mm. taken out their sales from their expenses and looking at their bottom line. That family now is thinking, we have looked at our income, salary, and um, money from investments. We are looking at our expenses, things like rent, school fees, shoes, and um, black tax, that is your paying for your family members, all these different things. Then the last line is what comes after we've taken care of all those things. If we do not monitor that top line, and especially that middle line that is very critical, nothing will come to this bottom line. Or whatever is coming to this bottom line might be too little. Now, when whatever has come to this bottom line has come, you're now asking, 
how do we invest? How do we secure the future of our children? How do we ensure that when it's time for them to go to university, we're not struggling? How do we ensure that we're planning for the next 10 years? And you have to be aggressive about it. Very important conversations. This wow, indeed yes. is... This indeed is turning, is turning the family into yeah. a company. Yeah, well, because, because you said the family is business. You have to look at it yeah, like it's I business. Yeah, I see so much of technicalities, you know. No, 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 but the basic thing, like she said, and, and I've always looked at it that way, but probably not as professional like she's done, um, you have to look at the income. Where is the money coming from? You know, what sources are we getting our financing from? And... Um, what are we spending out of what is coming? Mm. And she just said that you must spend not everything. Yeah. There must be something that you're keeping for the rainy day. Yeah, well, and that's the profit. For, for, for me, um, <sighs> Tosi, I'm, I'm going to throw it back at financial institutions. Well. You know, because I get a feeling that they may not just be doing enough to, en to encourage money management within family units. They have the packages and all of that. They're mm. throwing them out. But are they really taking them, taking the pains carefully to, through, carefully, understanding? What, 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 what's your take on that? And to be honest, I'm actually, you know, I had a conversation with my friend last year. And now that we are talking about it, there is room for this, to be honest. We need a niche targeted product targeted at families and just to be addressing this thing. There's something else I want to quickly talk about. And this is what a lot of families also suffer from. It's called a lifestyle inflation. A lifestyle inflation actually happens that when they start seeing incremental growth, their expenses are now growing at the same rate of that incremental growth. So it's almost as though you're working in vain. So you're seeing more money, you're seeing more clothes, sometimes even more cars. But what is coming back, it's very tiny. So it's like you're working in vain that if anything happens within three months, they'll be at the mercy of other people. They'll have to start selling things. So these are very important conversations. How can we actually target our families Honest conversation, how are you fighting lifestyle inflation? How are you protecting the future of your children? How have you started investing for the future? How are you planning to buy a home in the next five years or so? You understand? Mm -hmm. But I totally agree with you. We need to hold the financial institutions or even other entrepreneurs accountable that this is a product that is very important. Oh, okay. Um, we're looking at mindset, you know, at some point. Um, the proper thing to do is for the husband and wife to come together and say, this is the box. And whatever goes in is for the family and all that. But what, 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 what is the place of mindset in um, looking at how you manage the purse, really? How important okay. is it? I'm very glad you're speaking about this. Um, whenever we take financial literacy sessions with our clients, that's where we start from. Financial literacy is 80% mindset and 20% knowledge. Before I started Money Africa, I have I had two degrees. I'm working as a chartered accountant. I have the knowledge. Mm. Where was the habits? It's the habits that changes the game. There are people that work in financial institutions that understand the knowledge and they're still struggling with their money. There are investment bankers on Wall Street that are still going back into penury. They have the knowledge. They don't have the habits. The habit is the hardest part. Being able to be honest with yourself and practicing what you preach. Putting tools in place to ensure that you practice it. Also, when people see the bigger picture, it's easier for them to stay on track. Now, as a family, you're asking yourself, do we even have any book we've read on personal finance? Maybe one book, Richest Man in Babylon. You guys both take it, you take a turn, you both read it, or you start changing your mindset. Sometimes people also have a limiting mindset. They can't see the bigger picture. Yeah. For instance, how do you earn more money? Are you thinking about adding more skills? Are you thinking about taking maybe six months off to learn more skills that you can actually monetize? Mm. So having that right mindset actually plays a critical role. And that is really where it starts from. I like to see it from this point of view. The knowledge is a seed. The mindset is a soil. If you put a good seed in a poor soil, it will die. So the soil is very critical. And we need to actually make sure that we have the right mindset that is the bed for the knowledge. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because, because I, I read poor man, I mean, um, rich dad, rich, man, rich yeah, dad, yeah. And, and poor dad, yeah. and I was blown away. And it's, the difference is just so little, yeah. you know. Where, what are you looking at? Is the bottle half full or is half empty? empty. And um, stuff like that. During the COVID-19, a lot of write-ups came, came here and there when she was talking about lifestyle adjustments and modifications. And I'm like, yeah, that, that's right. Because sometimes we begin to spend on things that we don't really need. Mm. So managing money in the family really should be on extreme need 
not because the money is there yeah. and somebody just throws something at you at any point in time because the money is there without planning for it, without actually thinking and at green, do we need this at this point in time? Mm. You know, because the money is there, you just go and you take out of it and mm. yeah. Well, I, 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 there's something I want to go back to, Tosu, if you don't mind. Because pretty much we've talked about both of them, both of you. Yep. Now, what's the role of the children? Because we, we're assuming we're talking to young families. families. Mm. We also have older families who need to manage their, their finance, true, true, you true. know, for family finance. What is the role of the children when they start coming? And from what age do we start involving them? <clears throat> the earlier you involve the child, the more liberation you're giving them. Warren Buffett bought his first share at the age of 11. He did not do that because it was fancy. If his parents had not sort of played a role in, you know, opening his eyes to it, he might have not seen it. So we have a role, we have a responsibility to ensure that we're bringing them on early. I was in a shop the other time and I saw a mother and a daughter. The daughter was going through all those things. She said, Mommy, if I take this one, I won't be able to buy this one. Mommy, if I choose this one, I won't be, I was so happy. She already understands the power of opportunity cost, the power of staying with, she had a list, the power of staying within a budget. So start them on early. Parents watch you, children watch you. Whether we admit it or not, a lot of adults, we picked up our money mindset from our parents. That's why you also see that there's a lot of research that states that children of entrepreneurs, there's a very high chance that they also become entrepreneurs. They are watching you. Mm. People that also struggle with debt, you know families that they're always going from one debt or everybody knows that they're only this thing, that kind of a thing. Sometimes their children pick it up as well. So it is a huge responsibility that you actually even sort out your personal finance because there's a very high chance that your child will pick up the energy, will pick up those habits from you. So it's a responsibility and it's very important. You can never start too early. So there are also books out there, money books for children, buy it, buy it for them, personal finance classes, start them early, switch on the YouTube channel, start introducing it to them early, 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 so that in the long term it stays, it's the best time to catch them early. Okay, Tosin, uh, there's something else that you need to clarify for me at this point. Um, the area of, yeah, we're talking success and success, we have been made to understand that success is not really about how much money you've you have in the bank and you can check your bank statement and see the digits and the figures from time to time. Yeah, so when we're talking family management, are we talking about, you know, savings? Are we talking about investments? Are we talking about borrowings and lendings and looking at um, what's the margin when you save X, Y, Z, you know, how much comes in to add up to your money? Is it the cash in hand or investments or the cash we have in the bank. Just clarify all of this for me, please. Okay, great. So now the thing with success is very, very subjective. What will be success for A will be different from what is success for B. Everybody has a different angle to it. But when we are talking about money management in general, we like to look at it as a net worth kind of thing. So net worth is very, very, very important, right? So you're thinking about, you know, what are my assets? Like an asset could be cash. It could be properties, it could be um, cars, it could be anything that belongs to the family that can be converted to cash. Then we have the other part that is liabilities, things like loans. And loan is not a bad thing. It depends on how you use it. We always advise people, if they can get a good mortgage to buy a house, please take it. Loan is not a bad thing. The problem with loans is if you're using loans to buy a shoebi, using loans to impress your neighbor, using loans to live in a neighborhood you cannot afford, that's where the problem is. Then you also have things like equity, right? So that's basically all the things that we are looking at in terms of the network. So it all sort of makes sense. And also from a savings angle, the saving is not a bad thing. It's nice for emergency fund. If anything happens, that you quickly have somewhere to fall back on. However, we always advise people that don't leave all your money in savings. Rather put it in investment because you get a higher interest and it grows in the long run, and just it's sitting down in the bank, staying idle and staying fallow. So those are all the things that we are looking at in terms of money management. Thank you so much, Tosi. The, the money in the bank stays idle and fallow for you and I, but it doesn't stay that way for the banks. You know, they're making business <laughs> out of it and getting huge investments and um, extra money from it. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this very important aspect, you know, of... Um, family finance with us this morning on the show. 
Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you once again, Tosin. Thank you for having me. Have a fantastic day. Okay, you too. All right, we're sure that by now you have um, been with us from the beginning and you've learned a lot from our conversation with Tosin, who has um, spread the issue of family management, you know, so wide beyond our expectation this morning. You must have picked um, one tip or the other from it. Please put it into practice. That's the essence of this program, to ensure that we get to that stage where the family is very, very strong, very united, and very viral, you know. Um, and then we, we will avoid a lot of things that are happening now. Marriages are being targeted so much, and that's the essence for this program, to try and get us to bring that understanding to men, men and women, husbands and wives, to make sure that we have a strong, united family. And then the extended society will be a better place for all of us, won't it? Yeah, of course, certainly. Uh, extended families and all of that. Yeah. We'll be able to touch on that in a short while, right? Uh, our next guest is a familiar face. Mm. And <laughs> I'm so eager to I'm so eager to introduce him. He is our favorite spiritual therapist. He is everywhere. He is Excel. His name is Excel. Hmm. Yeah, he's an excellent guy. Yeah, and he's everywhere. <laughs> Excel Adeleye Samuel will be with us very soon. Don't go away.